What's up, Helmet? How you doing? Uh, give me. Let's see. I think we stream. Helmet, give me one if you can hear me. Check one, check two. Looks like we're good. How's everybody doing today? I'm struggling. Just came out of the meeting. Do a little, uh, what's up, Tobias? Looks like y'all can hear me. <laughs> My big ray can't hear me. Can you hear? Can you hear? <laughs> uh, what helmet? What's up, Tobias? Give me one if you can hear me. Okay, cool, cool, cool. How's everybody Tuesday going? I just <laughs> came out of the work meeting, so uh, this would be something. Um, like I said, uh, super short. Um, I'm doing a compliance series, so I'm going all over the um, a lot of the compliance thing, things like HIPAA, FISMA, uh, ITAR, some of the bigger ones. Um, I did FERPA. So, um, so this is kind of <laughs> one of the unique ones. Let me make sure I got my stuff together. Um, so, 140 guys, too, is. So, first, long story short, is it stands for Federal Information Processing Standard Publication. It's 142 still in effect. 140-3 is coming. So what is it? It's a U.S. government computer security standard used to approve cryptographical modules. All right. Basically, the government's got to sign off on security to make sure the vendor's doing it correctly, right? Uh, FIPS 140-2 is the National Institute of Standards and Technology issued FIPS 140 publication series to coordinate the requirements and standards for cryptographical modules. The other part of that is FIS 140-2 or 3 gives you a certified um, attestation that says you're doing encryption properly. The cryptocurrency modules are produced for the private sector, the open source community, and U.S. government and other regulated industries. All right. So once again, uh, Helmut or Tobias, you could do some uh, AES cryptographical module, right? And you could say, um, you could say you, you did it right, right? How do you know that you programmed it right, right? Long story of that is how you know you did it right is you sent it off to government and they signed off on it, All right? So from a compliance security perspective, anything you do from um, Cisco, networking, database, web server, app server, anytime you do encryption between any of those devices, right, it should be approved. Right, being approved means it's FIPS 140-2 or 3 certified. So on March 22nd, uh, I'm sorry, March 20th, yeah, 22nd, 2019, United States Secretary of Commerce will approve FIPS 140-3, which is the new security requirements for cryptographic, cryptographical modules exceeding FIPS 140-2. Uh, FIPS 140S3 test began in uh, September 2020. Although no FIPS 143 validation certificates have yet been issued, FIPS 140S2 testing is still available until 2021. And in red, I have FIPS 140S2 validation will be moved to historical list on September 20, 2026, right? So we always know the government's flow, right? So they say FIPS 140S2 will be good till 2026, which is crazy, right? There's new attacks, <laughs> new new ransomware, new new um, government attacks, right? So for that to be valid to 2020, 2026 is, 
is insane. Long story short, um, I'm going to start doing um, AWS stuff. And part of my AWS stuff is how do you validate to make sure AWS is using Scripts 140-2 encryption? The cool thing is, and I got slides coming up, AWS and Azure are, are already there with FIPS 140-2. They're actually looking up uh, FIPS 140-3. So, so what is it? It's the standard used by the United States government to validate cryptography modules. Encryption standard divide, defines four levels. Level one is required the production-grade equipment and external uh, testing algorithms be used. FIPS 140-2 level two requires physical tampering evidence and role-based authentication for hardware. The software is required to run on approved OS. All right, so now when we talk about security, right, we're talking about specific checks to make sure, you know, your 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 um, OS is locked down. And that applies to anything, right? OSs, databases, um, anything you, you use. And once again, I'm going to do a, a AWS layout where I'm going to uh, do all of that when I set up my, my AWS um, architecture. All right, so we're just talking about the compliances you need on each one of those machines to make sure you're good to go. So what is level three for, for FIPS 140-2? The hardware must be uh, feature physical temper resistant and identity-based authentication. They also must be physically or logically separated between the interfaces through which critical security parameters. Level four is the highest level. It requires hardware to be tamper active. That means it must erase device contents upon detecting any changes, All right? What's up, network, bro? Glad you can make it. Talking about a compliance, this uh, FIPS 140-2, <laughs> it's some, it's some CA type stuff. So long story short, so the FIPS 140-2, those are the three levels. And once again, my man, Network Bud in the house, if you're doing Cisco stuff, go check him out. So when he's doing encryption, setting that up in uh, the Cisco routers in the VLAN, the, the encryption he used on those features to make sure they're they're communicating right inside Cisco, uh, you have to look out there. Um, Cisco has FIPS 140-2 modules, right, to make sure their stuff is being encrypted at the right at the right level. All right, so we're going to talk a little bit about the difference. Uh, FIPS 140-2 is leaving. What's so new about FIPS 140-3? All right, FIPS 140-3 will include hardware modules, firmware modules, software modules, and hybrid. Uh, FIPS 140-2, they, they have really the similar checks of FIPS 140 dash from level one to three, authentication at the security levels, and also added um, the level four, it must be multi-factor authenticated, right? So when you're trying to log in to certain level of encryptions at a certain level, right? Everybody knows it has to be MFA, right? So they're just putting that in there. So when you setting up your uh, AWS and your VPC, which is networking in there, when you log on to the box, right? You just say for this encryption level, it needs to be MFA approved, All right? So which which is which is standard? So for FIPS 140-3, this is one of OWASP top 10 checks for cryptography. So the first thing is to determine the protection needs for data in transit and data at rest. You see, I put in there any old or weak cryptographical algorithms or protocol used either be uh, default or in an older code. Right. Any fault, we need to file crypto keys and use crypto keys generated or reuse or proper key manage or rotation of keys missing. Right. That'd be a finding. So what is it going through? It's just going through this way once again. This is encryption you use. Uh, what's the ciphers you use or any of them old. Right. So the coming up slide, I'll show you how to uh, scan your system and figure out if you're using old ciphers or not. Right. Uh, so, overview of the cryptographical module validation program, CMVP. Uh, it's a joint uh, effort between uh, NIST, National Institute of Technology, and Department of Commerce, and the Center of Cyber is the branch of communication. The goal of the CMV is to promote the use of validated cryptographic modules and provides federal agencies with security metrics to use procuring validation cryptographical modules. So basically, and I'm gonna put in the in the um, 
description. There's a website you go through and you just put the vendor name in there and it'll tell you if it's validated. All right, so we just talk about compliance at a high level. Um, like I said, I'm doing a compliance series. So FIPS is one of the compliance uh, modules talking about uh, encryption. So cryptographical security and testing laboratories or independent laboratories accredited by uh, NIST. So basically, once again, they send their crypt, uh, graphical modules to the government. The government takes them through these tests and they just basically say if they're doing AES or or um, Odessa 3, I mean, or Diffy Hillman, there's a lot of different uh, security checks. So they just make sure you're doing it right, right? Because I see a lot of um, guys <laughs> downloading stuff for the internet. It says A2256 or DAS3. And I say, how do you know if that uh, vendor programmed it right? And people look at me like, well, when they always program it right now. So right too is a lot of times too, you could be downloading stuff from a website. You could be getting the nation state. It could be already hacked. It could be malware in there, right? So you got to be very <laughs> particular where you get your your encryption from. And like, like I said, a lot of the big vendors, that's why we use them. They have that stuff built in. If you use an Oracle, SQL Server, MySQL, or, or any of the big vendors, right? They, they're going to have that covered. What's up, Gail? I like it. <laughs> I'm doing okay. I'm dragging. <laughs> just came from another beat. I'm just talking about a high level uh, cryptographical modules and what does that look like. Uh, that's part of my compliance series. I have a playlist with uh, compliance stuff in there, so I want to do all the relative uh, compliance uh, uh, statutes that you could use. Um, two is, if you're ever on a job and somebody start talking about compliance, you can go on that playlist and nine times out of ten, it'll have whatever compliance you, you need or you're talking about. Uh, FISMA, DOD, HIPAA, I did FERPA, I do a NIST, uh, FIPS is one, I'm going to do FedRAMP, I'm going to do ITAR, which is the international trade of guns, right? How you move guns and stuff. So, so I want to do all the compliances out there. So let's talk about the, uh, once again, FIPS. Uh, this is for AWS. Basically, uh, FIPS 140-2 is used in the uh, United States and Canada. that specify security requirements. If you require the use of FIPS uh, 140-2 validation cryptography module, AWS, AWS US East and West data centers uses it. AWS GovCloud and AWS Canada Central uses the command line of programmable APIs using FIPS. Right. So if you a vendor or if you, <laughs> what's up, Titan? So, yeah, so if you're using FIPS and you're trying to get government work or government contracts, this is the stuff you need to make sure you um, put it in your architecture, all right? Because I think me and Network Bro are going to do a collab where I'm going to set up an AD AWS um, environment. He has hardware at his house, so we're going to link those up to make sure they look like one network. So when we do that, I'm going to make sure all the encryption done from, I'm calling his lab on-prem to the cloud, right? All that stuff has to be using FIPS uh, encryption, make sure it's validated, make sure it could pass a, a DOD STIG or IRS PUB 1075. So we're going to make sure it can pass those um, compliance checks. Right. So Amazon Virtual Private Network uh, input in AWS US Cloud using FIPS 140-2 validation. AWS works with its customers to provide information they need to manage compliance. When, use, when using AWS US East or West, uh, GovCloud or AWS Canada. So, of course, when I say mine up, I'm a um, federal guy. So I'm actually going to set it up to AWS US East and West, right? It would be a couple more pennies, but I want to get the uh, most protection. So when I said when we do that DOD scan on our setup between on-prem at a network for a place up to, to my AWS cloud, right? We could pass that test, right? So then when you go to vendors, when you get a job or you job interviewing, a lot of your employers like to hear that you understand what federal compliance is, even if it's a commercial site. Like I work for a top 500 drug company, right? They reported to the drug department, right? So they had to follow federal regulation. Right. I worked at DOD. We know they have to follow 
government regulation. I work with small companies trying to do business and get government contracts and state contracts, right? So they got to do federal level compliance. So that's why I always talk about that fair work. And let's be honest, the fair bag is nice than the, the commercial bag and the state bag, right? So so that's why I want to um, just kind of like hit on these high level um, things, talking about FIPS. Like I said, nine times out of 10, AWS and Azure endpoints in their technology already already has that set up, but you got to check it right to make sure it, it can pass a test. Uh, sub network, but we definitely got to get that plan to collab. I, I will reach out when I'm ready to set up. I just had a new Dell service to the rack. Too. All good, bro. Let's shoot for 2022, man. I'm old. I need a couple months too. But I'm starting to get my AWS uh, skills, like I said, set up. I've been doing a few AD, AWS uh, reviews, so I'm trying to um, get those skills up. And I think the best way to get those skills up, like you do, man, you lab, you lab almost every day, network, bro. I got to get my labbing up. So for me, um, but yeah, we'll definitely collab on that. Uh, we probably make a little series. We might do it like once a week because I know you try to do four times a week. We'll figure it out. We'll make it happen. That way we'll collab together. And if you see, um, AWS has a list of FIPS endpoint services, and that tells you there's probably a hundred of services. I just saw the first one. You see Amazon API Gateway. It shows you AWS US East and West. It shows you what those gateway names are. If you're in a government cloud or if you're in Canada, right? There's hundreds of those services out, right? So we just need to look at the services on the sheet to make sure we're using those FIP services, right? Long story short, right at the top, you just making sure it was approved by the government, right? So we can get the government bag and we're, and we're government uh, secure. Uh, blind guy, his wife listening in already. <laughs> my favorite line. I'm a, that's me, man. That's my favorite. I'm old and tired. I'm old and tired. Uh, I'm going to hit your email back, uh, which I which sent me. So. <laughs> We scattered it. I'm going to go on a uh, blind guy, his wife, and their life. We're going to talk about <laughs> com uh, commercial um, cybersecurity, especially coming on Christmas. A lot of people are hooking their toys up to the internet, which could be a bad deal. So we'll talk about toys being connected. Um, if your kids are actually on um, TikTok or Snapchat, not trying to scare anybody, there's a lot of pedophiles out there. So we'll touch at that. We want to make sure everybody, you know, I'll stay on top of their game. So uh, I'm going to go on Black Guy and his wife. We're just going to talk about um, regular um, security, right? I, I'm a fair guy. I love fair. But once again, we're going to talk about thermostats, um, a lot of things. You can hook your thermostat, your refrigerator, your dishwasher, right? All of those have security vulnerabilities in them, right? So we're going to put all that um, out there in there. So um, once again, I'm going um, AWS that has the status CMV, which is the validation. It just talks about October 1st, 2022 is when uh, FIPS 140-S2 will start rolling off, and we're going to roll the new stuff in. And long story short, let's, FIPS is cool. It's got a big name, but what we're talking about is the government's reviewed this software package, right? And they said the uh, encryption is done properly, right? At the, the highest level, that's basically what we're talking about too, right? A lot of people say the government want to review it. Why? So they can hack it and find no weaknesses out, right? So, so, but we're from a business perspective. We're from the federal government perspective. So, so, so that's how we're going to move. So once again, everybody check out a uh, network bra and a uh, blind guy, his wife and their life. I think I'm going to try to slide in next week. Um, like I said, we're just going to talk about a uh, regular security, uh, nest, um, be talking to Alexa, um, to and all that, you know, rolls up the security. And two, we're gonna ask is did Alexa send their encryption to the government to make sure nobody can uh, take your voice commands when it gets saved on their machine and steal it, right? All that's how encryption plays in. This is uh, Microsoft Azure. Basically, we already know they're FIPS 140 213 certified. I just took a screenshot. Uh, between Amazon and Azure, they taking all the market share. They love that Jedi federal money. So, of course, they're, they're FIP certified and FIPS validated. Uh, here was a note from their machine uh, from AWS. I'm sorry, for Azure, FIPS 140-2 was superseded by FIPS 140-3. They're just giving you their uh, transition schedule. Uh, after September 2021, the new version of FIPS 140-3 will become the only option new for validated certificates. So basically they're just saying 
Uh, we on the game. We on top of uh, 5140-3. Uh, we want to make sure we comply with federal money because they want that $10 billion Jedi money, right? So that's basically, once again, what FIP's talking about. Uh, this is actually an um, architecture diagram. I just doing it real quick from um, AWS. I'm more of an AWS guy. So uh, we just kind of wrote through it from the top to bottom. Now, the stuff in red is a web application firewall all the connections from the load balancer to the all scaling web tier, all that's encrypted at FIPS 140-2. It goes to the network load balancers that goes to the all scaling proxy. Once again, all that's encrypted at what? FIPS 140-2. You see it going to the API gateway, going to the database. So every line that you see connected to one of those box are encrypted and it's encrypted at FIPS 140-2 at that level of encryption we need all right two is once again this is for my compliance series i'm hitting all the big compliances that you would need so if you are at work or trying to get a job or trying to learn more about insurance i have a playlist with all the compliance stuff in there i'm actually going to do a, a course on uh cyber security insurance as an entry level um as an entry level step to be one of your uh, first jobs in uh, cyber security if you want to do that um my um I guess I'm old school, so the two guys, CL, he came in like me um, as a programmer. Shout out to the programmers. Uh, networking, I think, is the basis of security. Shout out to Network Bro. But there's millions of ways to get into uh, cybersecurity. Right? You can go help desk. Shout out to Kev Tech. Um, you can get in with certifications, right? Just try to get on the help desk, then get into cybersecurity. Uh, but for me, uh, I think programming and networking is the basis of cyber security to build on top of that, right? So um, I did a quick, and you'll see, uh, it's called a Qualsys scan. It's going to check your ciphers. So when you do FIPS 140 2, they're checking your ciphers, checking how you do it right to make sure you're doing it right. So long story short, uh, <laughs> I did Steck and Shake. I need to. Uh, Work together more with blind guy, his wife, and their life. I got to get more vegetables in my diet, but shout out to them. But yeah, I just steak and shake. They came out with a B, which for cybersecurity, that's not good. You should always be an at an A. So we're going to step through it and see why, what they can do to get an A, right? As far as encryption. So if you see at the top, you see SSL test. I did steak and shake.com. It comes back and it says, okay, we're a B. I don't put my credit card in a website unless it comes back as an A. Right. Oh, yeah, shout out to data analysis. I, I agree with that. I lumped that in with programming helmet. Um, so for me, data an analysts, some, you're using some kind of programming to R, uh, Oracle, or something to get those numbers. SAS, I'm an old guy. SAS, <laughs> so, so yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, helmet. Um, yeah, for me, um, when you deal with, um, programming and data analytics, you're dealing with web servers, app servers, you're dealing with customers, you're dealing with um, a lot of times too when you're doing Alex, you're dealing with uh, sensitive information and, and how you control it. Oh, shout out. I, I've been doing, I've been reading a little bit about R. I had a little security issues with R, Helmet. I think I had a few, but that was a couple years ago. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing a little Python too. So from that scan, you see uh, it, it looks at the uh, certificate from the website from Steak and Shake. When you see star.steakandshakename.com, that means it's a wild card. That's not good because a lot of <laughs> a lot of companies that have wild card certificate, meaning basically you can use that certificate in every server in your organization, right? You can use a duplicate. Um, I'll show the reason why that's not good. Uh, and two is when you do CLOSIS, it tells you, it looks over the uh, HTTPS protocols, SSL 2.3, TLS 1.0, and 1.3. Anything below TLS 1.1 has actually been hacked or is actually vulnerable, right? So that's why those two are in orange. Right, TLS 1.0 and 1.1 are in orange, meaning they're weak. SS 3 and 2 has definitely been hacked. So that's one reason they came out as an B. 
So if you look at all the orange ciphers underneath, those are the ones that tell you weak. Long story short, we just need to go into the Second Shake web server, whoever they're at, admin, and disable those certs. But that me, me as a hacker, though, we, when we're talking about uh, proof of encryption, now I know those certifications weak. So if I wanted to, I could try to hack uh, Stack and Shake, right, with those weak ciphers to see if I can get me some free Fisco milk. I love stuff dipped in grease and cheese. Not good for an old man, but I love a good Frisco milk. Shout out to the Frisco milk. Maybe we might hack them on another uh, live stream to get the free Frisco milk. And two is I just put on there. This is from the CISA uh, and the NSA. Remember when we talked about the wild card uh, cert it was using? This tells you why avoiding dangers of a wild card TLS cert and technique. Wild card certs are often used to authenticate multiple servers, same organization, time, and money. While their certificates are legitimate, uh, but can confer risk from properly uh, secure servers to other servers in the same certificate. So basically, I'm not going to read that, but basically the NSA tells you how to hack Steak and Shake so we can get the free Frisco melt. I didn't want to show the whole organization, the whole thing. That might make me negligent, but the NSA tells, tells you why not to use it. And they actually walk through how to hack people using wild certificates. Shout out to Gail. We about to get the free Frisco melt. <laughs> but uh, that's it. Like I said, something short. It was short and boring. I wanted, uh, once again, I'm doing the uh, all the compliances. So FIPS is a small and compliance is actually included in the other um, compliances. Most, when you do FIPS or DOD, they tell you your, your um, cryptography has to be FIPS 140 tax dash two or three, meaning the government had to re, uh, uh, sign off on the encryption. So I just want to come out with something super nerdy, super compliance uh, for my uh, federal <laughs> my federal people trying to get the federal back. Once again, I think I'm going to do an insurance class showing people how to get it in uh, cybersecurity doing insurance. Basically, that's just uh, cybersecurity checks for organization doing HIPAA, IRS, FERPA for education, right? A lot of just paperwork and understanding the flow of um, doing those checks, right? And the people that are doing the check will be my homie, like Network Bruh. He's a security so And I send him the uh, STIG checks. I always jump on his live probably once a week and drop some uh, STIG checks in there so we so he can see them, so he knows what that looks like So in the game. <laughs> let's go yeah so but now that's all i got um i'm gonna shoot blind guy I'm, I'm hoping to be on there next thursday i gotta check my uh my schedule and make sure i can block that off i'm usually work from home so that's a good day block off that 11 15 um so go check out um network bro go check out uh blind guy his wife um anybody got any other questions like i said i just want to hit you with the compliance um like i said it's it's federal and People know I do a Sunday at three uh, cyber uh, introduction to cybersecurity, and part of that's going to grow into introduction to forensics, to uh, how to get the federal bag, how to take all that and secure a system. Then uh, there's a guy called uh, Alpha Cyber. We're going to do a red team, blue team. I'm actually going to lock it down using the SIG and stuff inside AWS. And he's going to try to hack it from the red team. And he's going to show you the techniques he's used, going to try to use to hack uh, the AWS. It might be the one me and Network Bro are going to set up. So he might try to hack Network Bro's house. <laughs> they come and get me. So we're going to figure out how to work. So I'm hoping to do collab with some of the guys I um I trust and I like, especially young, young, hungry guys, man. I like dealing with young, hungry guys making movies because this blind guy, his wife said, I'm old. I got to work with some of the young lines like uh, CL and uh, him and, and Network Bro. There's a lot of guys out here. Uh, keep it techie. Um, all those guys. So I'm going to collab with some of those guys so we can do uh, red team, blue team because we talk about security, but you want to see somebody set it up and you want to see somebody attacking him in real time. So you can learn those attack phase. You can learn how to do SQL injection. You can learn how to do uh, blue jacking, blue snurfing, uh, make the uh, Cisco router um, just start repeating packets because it's confused and doing the doing a denial of service, right? So there's a lot of different ways to attack and a lot of different ways. And to see that live and in person.
right? Instead of just me going over slides, you want to see the setup. You want to see the tag. You want to look at the packets in the background, right? You, there's um, login you can take so you can see the attacks they're trying to do and actually what the router's doing when that person is trying to attack. That's all I got for today. Uh, like I said, it was something short. Thanks for uh, joining me. We have to get some free stuff, Gail. That's all I got. Um, always, if you need to reach out, Professor Black Ops at gmail.com. You can always go on my um, YouTube page. My my email's down there. Um, just reach out. Um, like I said, I'm hoping to collab more, especially with the young lions. I enjoy that. I'm out. Everybody have a nice day, and I'm sure y'all see me on different channels and uh, different things. I'm hoping to go Thursday and do a uh, live stream on um, ageism. How does that affect the old guy like me? Can I get a new job? Can I prosper? Can I get it more? What's up, my man? I'm glad you can make it. Uh, go check out her channel. She's expiring. She's 40 and in great shape. I'm 50 and breaking down, so I got to eat a little better. Even though I had a Frisco melt for lunch. Shout out to the Frisco melt. <laughs> I'm done. Like I said, I'm I'm done for today. Check out the replay. Uh, once again, like I said, I'm, I'm collabing with everybody. <laughs> everybody in on YouTube. So you see me on a lot of people's channels now. Once again, thanks for joining.